when they did the soil investigation, not a single tree got taken out. That was pretty amazing. We cannot deny the development of infrastructure in Singapore. You know that you must build it. It's a matter of how you build it which is important to us. And in March 2013, Straits Times published a, the announcement by LTA of the Cross Island Line. And it, as part of that announcement, there was a map with one line drawn straight through the Central Nature Reserve. We basically were in shock because there was no other information. Will it be underground? Will it be above ground? What's the plan? It really wasn't clear. The Nature Society President, Vice President and myself as a council member of Nature Society at the time, we met up with the uh, Ministry of Transport and, and designed an engagement panel and we called in people who were not part of Nature Society, it wasn't just a Nature Society thing. And we arranged for meetings with LTA engineers and, and project managers and the early meetings were getting to know you, you know, and the air was quite thick, you know, you could, you know, there were, you know, we weren't, we weren't exactly friends. <laughs> And we eventually got down into the sharing of information. We got to the point of understanding that this was going to be an underground rail link. They would have to do soil investigation for an underground route. And that soil investigation would involve bringing borehole machines, which weigh around about three tonnes each, into the alignment. To bring three tonne borehole machines onto that alignment means that you would have a highway running across the nature reserve. There's no other way you could bring them in without constructing extra roads and making extra space. Uh, so, so we objected to that on the basis of um, previous engineering failures in Singapore. LTA then committed to do an environmental impact study. It took you know, a year or two to finish. And then um, when it came back, we noticed that our concerns had been uh, addressed and that the alignment had been changed. And when they did the soil investigation, not a single tree got taken out. Not a single tree got taken out. That was pretty amazing. The periphery parts where the tunnel boring machine would be put in the ground and taken out of the ground. And so there were two work sites designed. One work site was in um, Island Club Road and the other work site was over at a saddle club. And uh, there were problems because the, on, the, on the saddle club side, uh, the western side, the forest there was, quite, was found by the consultant to be quite good and it turns out that it was former nature reserve. And the consultant found good fauna, pangolins and stuff like that, colugos. The flora was also found to be good by the consultants. They moved that worksite away from that spot and they, they considered another spot. The flora and fauna consultant went back in to this new spot. Uh, again, he found rare plants and animals. LTA again moved their site. And this is incredible. I mean, we've never, it's unprecedented that, that a government agency would, would, would take these sort of measures. Ultimately, you know, as a result of the type of interaction that we had with LTA, the preparedness of both sides to listen to each other and learn from each other, they maintained a consistent approach and attitude towards mitigation measures and all this, this worked all the way through. So that was, that was good and, and now we're looking forward to the implementation of the, of the railway track.